So first of all, um, we're just going to answer some questions that came in in advance and just talk about sleeping bags in general. So, this is a sleeping bag. <laughs> this is our new wool babe um, in piha stripe, um, which is a new colour for spring, which we're quite excited about. So I'm just going to go through some of the key features for you so we can understand what they're for and how you can compare different sleeping bags. So the first one that um, differs with sleeping bags is the zip. So this is the front zip and you can see a front zip bag generally will do up at the top and will close downwards and it should have some cover to stop the zip uh, rubbing under your baby's chin. That's called the zipper garage which I know now. And a front zip sleeping bag would generally end down the bottom. And with this one here, you can see it's a two-way zip. So that means you can use your sleeping bag in the push chair, pull the buckle through that gap there, and then the other part comes out the back of the sleeping bag through there. So that's um, a front zip bag with a travel slot. Okay, so to compare to that, this is a side zip wall, babe. So the zip starts under the arm and zips down. So the bag opens right out as so. This one also has a travel slot, front and back. Uh, some front, some side zip bags, sorry, will zip the opposite way to our wall, babes. So they'll start here and finish the other end, just depends on the brand. Okay, so the next feature I'm going to point out is these little snaps under the arm. So different brands do the snaps differently. Um, let's see. Actually, I don't know if I hear the so slumber sack and zero to six month grow bags just use a dome like that, whereas our wool babes have the tricky little tab instead. So the purpose of the snaps under the arm is to make the chest a little snugger and to make the armholes smaller. So for a bag like a wool babe, the size range is three to 24 months. Uh, so it's designed to fit up to a two year old so that arm hole measurement is going to be too big for a little baby. So when you first start using a wool baby at about six or seven kilos, about three to four months, use the arm snaps and then by about somewhere between six and nine months you won't need the snaps anymore and you can just use that fully extended. So with the um, bags that have snaps like this under the arms, it does mean that your arm, baby's arms are still out of the arm holes. So it's not um, a swaddling feature, it's a sizing feature. So I'll pop that on just so you can see how that works. Here's baby Lisa, she doesn't mind donking your head on a hard table. She's very obliging. So Do all bags have those snaps? Uh, no, thank you, Georgie. Not all bags have snaps. Um, it depends on the size. So like Aiden and Anae's bags are size 0 to 6 months and then 6 to 12 months. Or um, the Inventor bags and so on that go from 4 to 12 months. The size range is smaller, so the armholes are more perfectly sized to that age of baby. When you're covering a bigger age range like with our wool babes, that's generally where you'd use snaps to make a size adjustment. So you can see there, it just pulls the chest in a little bit snugger. And it makes the arm hold that long rather than the whole length. So with the wool baby, you do get almost two years of use from it. So it's good value. Okay, what else shall we cover? I think that's most of the key features. James, have you any other key features? Travel slot, domes, zip. I don't use the travel slot in the front zip. 
bag. Oh yeah, we did that. Yep, okay. with the double ended up. So we just move Lisa over. So we might just go through now and maybe look at some of the different brands and then we can talk about the different fabric compositions as we go. So with the wool babe, um, we're talking just today about mid-weight bags. So this bag is made from two layers. Um, of merino and cotton so you can see there it's two layers of the same weight it's a nice soft stretchy fabric it feels like t-shirt fabric but it has got 30% merino in it and that combination means it's durable like cotton it feels soft and smooth like cotton but the 30% merino helps with temperature regulation just got a question regarding the travel slot slot um, how do you prevent the baby from poking their feet out the hole Oh, that is a good question. Um, so some travel slots, like our wool babe ones, have Velcro. So it should have Velcro in the direction that means that if a foot is poked up through it, the Velcro will hold it shut. So that's why um, when we first started making wool babes, um, the Velcro wasn't there and yes, little feet could escape. So that was customer feedback actually that led that Velcro to end up on there. So this is a nature baby travel slot and it has a little dome. Um, let me just see what other ones we've got. So this is a grow bag travel slot and grow also use Velcro and these are sideways rather than horizontal. Vertical rather than horizontal to be technical. So most travel slots will have some way of securing them but no one will. All of the ones that we've got here have either got Velcro or a dome. Okay, so just moving on through some different compositions. This is a Nature Baby bag. And Nature Baby have three weights of bag. This is what we'd consider the mid-weight bag. I think on their website they call it a winter weight, but comparative um, to our other mid-weight bags. So it's made from merino on the inside. So a fine layer of, of stretchy merino on the inside. Um, and cotton, organic cotton on the outside. So that's a side zip. It's a side zip and a half. <laughs> Goes right round. Not sure why you. Probably just for ease of nappy changing, really. And that one has um, has shoulder snaps on one side and closed on the other. So there's our wool babe. Side zip in comparison, our wool babe ones snap open on both sides rather than just one. Just makes it easier to get it on. Somebody's asking for an adult one. I too would like an adult one. <laughs> we do joke about it in the office as well as our police onesies. We've had some requests for adult size police onesies. Okay, so just going through some more bags. This is a very sneaky, sneaky peek quite proud of this. You'll see this coordinates with Lisa's nighty um, and also Lisa's bodysuit which is just a cute boy. So that's part of our summer sleep store range which is being made in India at the moment from organic cotton and we wish they would hurry up and put them on an aeroplane and get them to us in time for summer. So you can see beautiful um, crisp summery organic cotton and it's two layers of um, I guess you'd say a, a thick t-shirt. It's not um, a really fine, it's a good chunky weight of cotton. So two layers of that um, is equivalent warmth um, to our other mid-weight bags. So our sleep store bags um, are made to the same size specifications um, as the wool babes. So the same length, same three to 24 month or two to four years, the uh, underarm, front zip, all of the same things. Tell us if you like this design. This one's also coming in white with little black crosses yep. and green swallows and grey hearts. And James is going to go and get the little um, swatches to show you. We're a bit excited. Right. A couple of questions. Oh, some questions. Oh my goodness, lots of questions. Oh, I hope I know the answers or I'll have to run away and have some coffee. Crops is a whole <laughs> pile. <laughs> Actually, I think those are black. Okay, so from Cherie, my baby is in a miracle blanket. What are some tips for moving him into the sleeping bag? Okay, Cherie, I've actually um, got a miracle blanket that I can show you how to do that with. So here's the miracle blanket. 
Here's my miracle brand card I've prepared earlier in anticipation of your question. <laughs> my mind reading skills are getting Okay, so if your baby's sleeping in the miracle blanket, um, what we'd recommend doing um, is putting them into the weight of sleeping bag, which you're going to use um, you know, over the next couple of months. So it might be a little bit lighter weight than at the moment uh, because you've got the miracle blanket over the top. Or you can vary the amount of clothing inside the bag so it's not too hot. So basically, first of all, you're just getting your baby used to having quite a lot more leg room. So if you see, a sleeping bag has got lots more room around the hips, more length, just more floppy than a miracle blanket. So my advice would be, first of all, just use your miracle blanket as you are, arms pinned down, wrap across the tummy, and wrap around. So that's why you can see it's, it's going to be quite snug because you've got your miracle blanket layers and your sleeping bag layers. So that's why you might want to start with a more of a sort of summer weight or mid weight sleeping bag rather than still a winter weight. So you can see the only difference is you're not putting your baby's feet in the leg pouch. So I would do that for a week or so. Depends how, um, how urgently you want to make the change but you know things with babies generally if you fairly gradual they'll go more smoothly. So then your next step would be to just wrap one arm out like that and then carry on and wrap across. So it's the same process you'd use if you're just weaning off the miracle blanket by itself, but at the same time um, you're getting into getting getting your baby used to the sleeping bag. And for a lot of people at that time they would introduce something to do with this hand. So rather than just wave around and <laughs> smack themselves in the face, it's it can be a good time to introduce a little comforter like a kuski um, for your baby to to snuggle up with. And then once um, your baby's used to that one arm out, at that stage you could either drop the swaddle all together or you could, um, you know, just have another week maybe of just firm wrapping around the tummy. Or a lot of people at that age would swap to using a safety sleep. And so for me, a safety sleep and a sleeping bag is a very good combination because you get this nice snug swaddling feeling that babies are used to plus they're safe and have plenty of room in their sleeping bag so I hope that answers your question Cherie um, just allow yourself plenty of time a good two or three weeks um, or even longer I think with my youngest he probably was in that combination of miracle blanket and sleeping bag for probably two months you know some more some days and um, and then got to the point where he just went straight into a sleeping bag at night okay so, just a question in regards to when the sleeping bags will arrive like in early December. Early December. Oh, give us a sneaky peek. Well, you can hold them up, James. James oh. is our marketing manager and country. our in-house designer. We're a bit lucky to have James for our in-house designer at our little company here. So um, James is going to show you the other designs that he came up with for summer. So we've got a nice little black cross design. And then we... Uh, what a nice little bird design, didn't we? Get a little yeah, a little the... summery swallow. Yeah. Isn't there a quote about swallow doesn't make a summer or something? Mm. We don't remember. <laughs> anyway, and there is a little grey heart as well, but we don't know where that sample is. Somewhere on my desk, so it could be never seen again. More questions? <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. So, oh, Cherie's question ended up on the floor. Um, Holly, what's best to wear underneath the sleeping bags? I'm finding this season super tricky. I'll put my one-year-old in a wonder suit and then a sleeping bag. He will start off super sweaty in the early evening, but then we'll be fine as it gets cooler. Okay, so a couple of things. When you buy a sleeping bag, it should come with... Should I show you that little pouch again? Ta-da! It's part of our new um, packaging with Wool Babe that we're a bit excited about. Old thermometer, new packaging. Um, so most sleeping bags will have some sort of little guide. <laughs> Sorry, you can actually find this information on our website rather than me wave it in front of you. Um, so room thermometer will tell you what temperature it is in here, 24 in here, no wonder I'm a little bit hot. And then on the back it will tell you at 24 with three seasons bag, um, a short sleeve bodysuit would be fine. 
just that. So in terms of Holly, your question and when it's warm in the early evening and then cooler at night, there's a few things you can do. One is um, to use ways of making the room cooler in the early evening, so the window open and a fan. Um, as it gets to the middle of summer and it's hot, you can put some ice or cold water in front of your fan so it circulates cooler air around. Um, but just getting lots of airflow is probably your best bet early in the evening. Um, in terms of clothing and layers, it's really tricky. My main advice is use natural fibre clothing. If you're finding that your baby's sweaty, it could be that the little bit of lycra in the wonder suit might be helping with the sweating. So maybe just go with 100% cotton or go with um, something that's a merino cotton blend or even a really light super fine merino. Um, and in terms of the weight of the sleeping bag, it's kind of a it's really getting into mid mid weight sleeping bag territory now for most of New Zealand. Some parts of Australia might even be getting into more summer weight, but um, a mid weight bag like the Three Seasons Wool Babe, um, that's good from about 18 degrees room temperature up to about 26. I even used it hotter up to about 30 degrees. Um, one summer before we decided we needed to invent a summer weight wool babe <laughs> but um yeah just vary the amount of clothing stick with natural fibers if your babies are sweaty um you know try not to use clothing that's got any synthetics um in there and also look at what's under your bottom sheet it's quite common for people to use um mattress protectors or um some people still use those plastic wrap things like those don't like the idea of baby sleeping on plastic and if you have a good quality mattress you certainly don't need to wrap it with plastic but just look at what's underneath and make sure that's not contributing to the sweating as well um, and then just some tips to know if your baby's the right temperature I mean it's quite it's fine if your baby's warm if they're red and sweaty like if you look at your baby and they're red then that's not a good sign if they won't settle because they're they're too hot and they're kind of fractious or screaming they're too hot you can feel um feel the ears is a good way just with the back of your hand if you feel with the front of your hand then you'll just feel your hot sweaty hand <laughs> but if you use the back part of your hand against the ears that's quite a good um, place to check if they feel about right not too hot not too cold you can also check down um, inside the chest but you'll generally um, annoy your baby by doing that Okay, and in terms of um, which weight of bag, my rule of thumb is always use the bag for the coldest part of the night. So that's where you need your fan and your window open and so on um, in the early part of the night. Oopsie, the floor's coming unstuck. <laughs> okay. Right, so um, Dale Stevens, our two and a half year old, is in a cot in a sleeping bag. He loves the sleeping bag, doesn't like blankets. We want to transition to a bed. Would you keep him in the sleeping bag in a bed? We're happy to, but bed and bag removal might be a bit much at once. Um, if not, how do you transition out of the bag? My advice would be stick with the bag. A lot of um, toddlers, when they go into a bed still in a sleeping bag, they don't realise they can escape from their bed, which is very useful with a toddler <laughs> and newfound freedom. And also your... Um, your sleeping bag is a really strong sleep association. So for children, when they get zipped into their bag, they know that it's sleep time. And that's why a lot of children settle so well and they stay sleeping all night in their bag. So I would totally stick with it. The only reason you might want to stop using the bag is if it becomes a safety hazard. Um, child's trying to walk around in the sleeping bag. Um, then you either need to teach them to take it off when they get out. Um, or swap to something that's got legs, like the ergo pouch bags that you can convert um, into having legs. So it's a sl convertible sleeping bag and sleep suit. But it's totally fine. Lots of um, children sleep in a, in a bed in their sleeping bag. I was going to be tricky and make a paper dart, but I won't. <laughs> it reminds me of when we went to a Nick Cave concert, and every time he'd finished a song, he'd pick up his sheet music and hurl it around the stage. It's very dramatic. These are both sort of related to transition routes. Swaddles. Mm. Is it easy to transition from swaddles to sleeping bags? Sleeping bag. Okay, so we might get to those um, if we have time because we did do our swaddle transition um, video last week. So if you go back on our Facebook page, 
um, to last Tuesday. You can see there's a very long video of me burbling on about transition from swaddling. It's on our um, YouTube page as well. Sorry? It's on our YouTube page as well. On our YouTube page as well. And the technique with the miracle blanket over a sleeping bag is a good one. The other swaddle which works well over a sleeping bag is the sleepy wings. So you can get your baby used to the sleeping bag, but it has the little arm swaddle. Okay, Linda Lewis, are there separate sleeping bags for summer and winter, or can you use one for both seasons? Well, that is the $64 million question, Linda. So it really depends on your bedroom, or your baby's bedroom, and what the room temperature is. So have a think about for yourself if you use the same bedding year round. And if your house is very temperature controlled, if you use um, you know, a heat pump at 20 degrees all year round, or if you live some, you know, in a really warm, dry, modern house and it stays a nice, consistent temperature, then you could use the same bag. But for most houses, um, they'll either be quite a lot warmer in the summer and quite freezing in the winter, in which case you do need a different bag. So in terms of um, comparison, this is a duvet weight bag here. Even though I promise we're only talking about midweight bags, just for comparison's sake. So if you have a look at that, it's a bit hard to see on the video, but that's filled with a thick layer of wool filling, merino wool filling. So that's the equivalent to using, you know, a winter weight duvet on your on your bed yourself. We've looked at the midweight ones, um, and then a summer weight would be like one layer of this fabric or a layer of muslin. So really, just have a look at how. Um, the temperature in your baby's room varies. If it's normally between 18 to high 20s, the three seasons wool babe is the bag we sell that covers the widest temperature range. So if there's any bag which will do you for the whole year, it would be this one. If your bedroom gets down below 18 degrees regularly, um, I would definitely use a winter weight for those times. And if your bedroom is consistently over the kind of mid 20s, which for a lot of houses in the middle of summer is the case, then you'd want a summer weight bag. And for a lot of people, they'll use a summer weight bag during the day from sort of now through till about March, and they'll use a mid weight bag overnight. So I hope that answers that, Linda. Okay, so we might just go and have a little competition now. So our competition um, is to win a wall bag. Not Lisa, just the wool babe. Um, and so if you would like to win a wool babe, three seasons weight um, wool babe, you can pick the colour and you can pick front or side zip. Have a look on our website after. Uh, if you're the lucky winner, you can, you can pick your colour then. Um, but if you want to enter now, just type relax, I'm cosy, which is our motto or tagline or whatever you call it. Um, for wool babe. So just type that in now and Susan's going to be over at her desk not doing accounting but drawing a competition. Hey Susan? <laughs> and printing out your questions. I think they were all black pages. That looked more impressive than it was. I thought I had 18 <laughs> questions to answer. Okay, how can you prevent your baby's feet poking out the hole? My baby's foot always gets stuck. So um, if, you've, if, you're, if you have a sleeping bag with a travel slot um, that doesn't have Velcro or a dome, just go into your local alterations shop at the mall or you know, wherever, wherever, someone that'll like hem trousers, that kind of place, and just get them to stick a couple of poppers on the back so that you can close up the travel slot. But most bags do come with a, with a way of securing it. And do all bags have snaps under the arms? Nope, they do not. It depends on the size. Generally bags that are for zero to six months um, would be the ones that have have the underarm snaps or ones like wool babe where they cover a wider age range. Okay, so I'll show you some more. Keep those questions coming and Susan will bring them in in a sec. This is a grow bag. So grow, um, grow bags the most um, well-known of all sleeping bag brands around the world. It's a UK company um, who've been going for I think about almost 15 years. They've sold about 10 million grow bags I think over that time and they really grow took the concept of sleeping bags which was common in com countries like the Netherlands and Germany and um, so on and they sort of brought sleeping bags to England and then to, um, to Australia and New Zealand. So Grow, um, 
Grow's summer and midweight bags are 100% cotton. They generally have um, jersey on the inside and woven cotton, which is like sheet fabric, on the outside. Um, they do a range of um, front zip bags, travel bags, and side zip bags. So Grow, um, Grow are a little bit more expensive than some other 100% cotton bags, but their quality is absolutely exceptional. We'd probably, most seasons we'd be lucky if we got one or two grow bags back that were faulty. Their quality is just un, you know, unparalleled. So you're paying for very high quality zips. The fabric's extremely good quality and so on. So that's actually one point that I should have talked about when I talked about the zips. That um, sleeping bags are one of those products where you really get what you pay for. So our sleeping bags go down to about $40, I think, are our cheapest. Sometimes on special you can get them for down to 20 But we only sell bags that we know are really good quality and will last you at least one season. A lot of our bags, like our wool bags or our grow bags, will do two or three children for two years. So they, the fabric and the zips and the domes are the three things that will determine the price and they'll determine how long they last. So you might be able to buy a bag for 20 or $30 from a chain store that will last you about a month <laughs> before something on it breaks. Or the fabric is nasty. So um, yeah, have a think about how long you want it to last for. Do you want to hand it down? Do you want to know that the fabric's really good quality? Okay, so another um, brand. These um, two bags here are made by Love to Dream. So most of you will know Love to Dream from their little arms up swaddles. Um, and Hannah, who is the very clever designer behind the Love to Dream brand, she branched out into sleeping bags a couple of years ago. So this is her Inventor bag, which is 100% cotton and has this clever little feature here for a bit of air conditioning. Just a little vent. Inventor. She invented the Inventor with its feature. Travel slot. And a tricky little sort of sideways diagonal zip there. So that's the Inventor. It sort of has the same look as the Love to Swaddle. And then this is her new bag um, that was launched last summer, which is called the Nuzlin. And the Nuzlin bags are the most amazing fabric. They're like a muslin. Um, so they're sort of quite an open, light weave, but it's not the kind of muslin fabric that's prone to pulls and tearing so um, the nuzlin bag you can't see it quite so much in the one tog but in the point two tog um, it's so light and cool but also very durable so that's both of the love to dream ones and what else have we got yeah, we've got... should we have a look at the length of the bags they're oh, also yeah. six month bags oh yeah i'll just show you these last three and then we'll look we'll compare the um the length. Oh, and I forgot to show you this one here, I got sidetracked. <laughs> so this is from um, Ergo Pouch, who's another Australian company who we just love their products. They're great quality, they're all organic fabric. This one is, um, you can see inside, it's beautiful. You can't really see, actually, I can see. It's beautiful, smooth, satin cotton on the inside. Ergo Pouch are quite different shape to a lot of bags. They're a lot skinnier. Um, and they have, most of their bags have the stretchy panel down the side. And none of their bags have a travel slot. So you can see they kind of taper in a little bit more than the others. And they have bamboo and cotton options. Then these three are all classed as mid-weight bags, but all of them have some polyester filling. So um, compared to your sort of 100% natural fibre, these ones um, just have a little bit of filling. So in terms of mid-weight bags, it is quite a variation. This is an Aiden and Anais bag, which is muslin on the inside and outside, and then has um, some light polyester filling inside. So that's actually a 1.7 tog. And I will come back to the tog question. Because I promised I will talk about tog ratings momentarily. This is Slumber Sack. Um, Slumber Sack's another UK brand. Um, Slumber Sack offer amazing value to be frank, they just, um, the fabric is almost as nice as what you'd get on a grow bag, um, we've had the zips, while they're not a YKK zip, they're very good quality, 
um, in terms of the testing for zip durability, they last almost as well as grow bags. They just um, don't have quite as many features, they're just a little simpler. Um, just They don't change out the prints all the time, so most seasons we get the same prints, which helps to keep the price down. So um, summer weight slumber sacks start from about $40. So they're a good, um, what we'd consider a kind of a value range. No bells and whistles, but very good quality and will last you quite a long time. And the one tog, that's a one tog, so a mid-weight bag, and that has a light polyester filling. And this is a um, Canadian brand, Perlimpinpin something. I probably should have practiced that beforehand. <laughs> These are quite new to New Zealand. Um, Perlimpinpin, there you go, from Canada. I'd say they're probably not made in Canada. <laughs> They'll be made in China for sure. Um, so these are bamboo, so they have that nice soft, um, silky sort of feeling that you get with bamboo fabric. For some reason they put polyester filling in them, so bamboo's often um, really good for people with, for children with sensitive skin, but the polyester filling, I'm not really sure about that for sensitive skin, better with 100% natural. And they're also quite a skinny little shape. So we haven't had a lot of customer feedback about these yet because they're just new. So if you have used one, do let us know what you think. And what was I going to tell you about? Togs. Tog rating. Okay, so um, we get a, probably as many questions about tog rating as we do about how many layers to put inside your sleeping bag. More questions. <laughs> oh, I need more coffee. <laughs> so tog rating is basically a measure of the kind of is it thermal resistance? I don't know what the technical description is, but it basically measures how warm is your sleeping bag. So TOG ratings are also used for sleeping bags, um, duvets, some blankets, but for um, in baby products, sleeping bags is the most common thing that gets TOG rated. So a good rule of thumb is one TOG is about one blanket. So if you're looking at um, a 0.5 TOG bag, which is a summer weight bag, it's equivalent to half a blanket, so about a sheet. A one tog is equivalent to one light blanket, and when you get into winter weight bags, they're generally either 2, 2.5 or 3.5, and so again, about that many layers of blanket. So um, a 3.5 tog blanket, a, sorry, sleeping bag, is a very warm winter weight, equivalent to a decent duvet. Also with sleeping bags, because they're more close fitting, they are warmer than if you were using, say a sheet by itself, a sheet tucked around you in a sleeping bag is a little bit warmer. So a mid-weight bag is anything around um, 1 to about 1 1.8, and then your winter weight bags are sort of 2, 2.5 upwards, um, and a summer weight bag would generally be about 0.6 tog down to 0.2. It is worth noting that when um, companies do their TOG testing, they're allowed up to 0.5 um, variance in the TOG rating. So what that means really is that a bag that's rated or labelled as 0.2 TOG could actually be the same weight as something that's 0.6 TOG or 0.7 TOG or a 0.8 up to about 1.3. So that's your 0.5 um, variance. So when you're choosing your bag, try not to get too hung up about whether it's 0.2 or 0.3, it's not really going to make that much difference in the scheme of things. Um, our advice would be to pick um, the fabric that you want, the zip you want, um, go for the best bag you can afford because you'll get the best value over time out of it, um, and look at what features you want. Try not to yeah, agonise over the exact TOG rating of it. Um, okay, so Sarah, if the sleeping bag is so thin, what is the point of baby wearing a sleeping bag? Might as well sleep without it, is having a sleeping bag a security thing? It's a really good question and it comes up a lot for summer. So maybe I'll just, ref um, I was meant to tell you at the beginning what the three points of using a sleeping bag were and I totally forgot because I got sidetracked and talked too much. So if we go through those three reasons, the first one is we did talk about being a sleep association. So when you zip your baby into their sleeping bag, even if it's a really light summer one, it still tells your baby that it's sleep time. If you use that summer weight sleeping bag when you go camping or to grandma's or at some random motel somewhere, 
you're still zipping them into their bed so they still know that it's sleep time. It doesn't mean they'll instantly lie down and go to sleep somewhere really strange, but it does still tell them it's sleep time. And for the summer, I would really recommend getting a bag with the travel slot. The amount of times when my kids were little that I would have them in the push chair um, zipped into their summer weight sleeping bag with, with a snooze shade or something over the top to make it a little bit darker. Um, the sleeping bag helps them know that it's time for sleep. So that's the first reason the sleep association. The second one is that sleeping bags help your baby stay at a consistent temperature all night. So there's none of the loose bedding which can get kicked off. So even if you're using just a sheet, it can still get kicked off and then your baby will wake up, you know, loose in bed. If you're using at this time of the year, you know, most of us would still be sleeping with a blanket or a duvet. Um, you know, it's the same for babies, they still need some bedding at this time of the year. And then when it's really um, warm in the middle of summer, even still just using a sheet, most people would still use a sheet in the summer, otherwise it's a little bit hard to go to sleep, I find, if you're just like lying there on your bed with nothing. Um, and then the third reason to carry on with your bag um, is, is the whole safety factor of loose bedding. It can be tempting to swap from using, say if you have a mid-weight or a winter weight sleeping bag and you think I'll ditch the sleeping bag and I'll just use a sheet or I'll just drape a muslin over my baby but then that can be quite unsafe because it's loose it could get tangled around your baby or they can end up down underneath it so with the sleeping bag even if it's a lightweight bag you still get all the safety benefits of baby not getting tangled in it or baby getting down underneath it and then one final thing which really applies just to summer is that if you stop using a sleeping bag for the summer, then when it gets cold again and you go to reintroduce it, you might find your baby's not that thrilled. But if you use a really lightweight one right through summer, you can easily swap it out to a warmer one, um, you know, when the temperature drops. Oh, I have a wool babe winner. Oh, so if this is your name, congratulations, Cherie. I think you were our first question asker as well as the winner. It's your lucky day. Um, so Cherie, if you go on our website and look at um, the Wool Babe page and you let us know which bag you'd like, drop us an email. Um, Susan will post the email to, on the page for you to get in touch. And to finish, Lou, what's your favourite bag? Oh. Just got a question that popped up. Oh, okay. My favourite bag is the Wool Babe, could you tell? <laughs> Um, we are quite biased about Wool Babe because we do own the company. We bought it about seven years ago um, when we had the opportunity because it was our favourite bag and it was the bag we recommended all the time. And um, and it's really the, the quality, the fact that the bags are such a good size and they really will last you for that two years. And the, just the amazing temperature regulating properties of the fabric compared to any other bag, this is the one that we get the most amazing feedback about. So if, you, if you're if you really trying to choose, you'd be kind of wrong with the wool one, particularly in this nice new colour. <laughs> so um, just to wrap up, that's my um, my spiel, I think we've been through all the bags. Oh, James wants to talk about the length. Yes. So just quickly, um, these bags are all the size that would fit a 6 to 12 month old. So all of our sleep store and wool babe ones are about 98 to a, a metre long. They'll go up to 24 months. That's a 6 to 18 month grow bag, so about 90 centimetres. There's no way I'm going to remember all the measurements, I'm just going to bluff it now. So these are 4 to 12 month love to dream bags, so a little bit shorter. 2 to 12 months ergo pouch, shorter again. That's a 6 to 12 month Aiden and Anais, that's about 85 centimetres, 6 to 18, slumber sack, it's about the same, about 90, and that's the little one with the unpronounceable name, 6 to 18, so similar length but quite a lot skinnier. There you are. Um, and just to wrap up, we're going to have some good specials on our website starting from today with um, a new special on wool babes. So if you're thinking about a wool babe after hearing me spiel about them, <laughs> um, all our wool babes just for one week are gonna be two, four, two, one, nine.
can't remember when we last did two for 219 so it's a bit of a keen deal um, and then you can get two one of these little pouches with your uh, room thermometer and clothing guide um, so two for 219 and that's on all three season and summer weight wool babes so normally 149 for one three seasons weight so that'll cover you from now right through you can even use the three seasons even in the middle of winter the three seasons is really good for day sleeps um, and then next week or later in the week we may get some more um, specials we're going to have some grow bag specials and some Aiden and A's specials coming up for you as well thank you for watching